Ah! Honey, I just had the wildest dream. That he actually kind of looks like him. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was, I was back at the Saban Skills Center and teaching, and I, I was back with the sweat pigs. The sweat pigs? The sweat pigs, those rascally high schoolers I used to teach. What's that sound? Did you hear something? No, I didn't hear anything. Hey, hey, who is that? I'm going to check this out. Where's my uh, trusty wand? Hey, Mr. Dodger. What? Up your nose with some vinyl tubing. Holy cow! It's... Why? Why, it's Scotty Scotterino. Hey, Mr. Dodger. Are you doing the show tonight? What are we doing here? Well, I was uh, very confused. Oh, my goodness. It's... It's Boom Boom Sibylla and, and, and Richard Porshack. Why, you're all here. The sweat pigs. I bet that was 20 years ago. What's happened to y'all? Well, you know, a lot of things have happened in this lifetime, Mr. D. Yeah, nice hairstyle. Thanks for noticing. So I heard, Scotty Scotterino, that you're back into Scientology again. Well, absolutely. L. Ron Hubbard knows a lot of things about how we connect to the universe. Fascinating. I'm glad you learned everything from my school teachings. Uh, and I also heard that you've been out in uh, France for a while. Did you try some of their food? Yeah, I know yeah. you got a bad smoking habit. <laughs> uh, didn't get a chance to get any of the cheeseburgers in France. Well, what do they serve in France for burgers? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, welcome back, Mr. Dodger. Oh my goodness, why, why Mr. Norman's even here. Mr. Sir Boogie Cat's in the house. Sir Boogie Cat, why thank you. I this just makes me so happy. I I gotta play something. Well, what do you think you wanna play? Well, it's a little tune that goes something like this. you laughed about Oh, the names have changed since you hung around But those dreams that remain in the turn Who would have thought they need you? Who would have thought they need you? Back here when we need you Yeah, we tease a lot because we got them on Welcome back Welcome back, 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 welcome back
live and we're back. We're yeah. back. Yes, we are. Woohoo! Are we back? Everybody's back. I'm, I'm so happy you can uh, join us. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Jeff Dodge and this is the Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour. We have our... Uh, Musical director Rich Reese on That's the right. drums. That's How are right. you today, Rich? I'm having a great day, Jeff. How are you doing? Welcome back. I thank you. Welcome it's good back. To be back. Welcome I was back. Uh, twenty Welcome years. Back. Twenty, is it 20 back. years. Twenty years. Is it forty years? Is it? All right, you got me. It's actually forty years. I'm seventy-three. Because I was so. just thinking, yeah, it was twenty years ago that Lauren Hill ripped that song off. So oh, I didn't know she did it. Did yeah. she really? Yeah, I don't. I'm not saying that. A, a Fuji's either. version, or no, it was her solo album, 1998's The Miseducation. Wow. So, well, yeah. I thought of it as uh, it's uh, actually Sebastian, John Sebastian's song, right? Oh my goodness! I think we just uh, something happened here on the f telephone. What? Holy cow! I think someone's trying to reach us. Let me. Uh, see what that's all about oh my goodness and it's creating all sorts of havoc uh okay it's uh, uh, hello hello is this uh who is this hello is it is this is this live uh we are live is this is this rex tillerson Rex, I, my goodness, we've been so worried about you. We haven't seen much of you lately. I'm on a submarine. You're on a submarine, really? Yes, I'm on a submarine. Well, because well, we Branson. we heard recent with Richard Branson, the billionaire. Yes, it was Richard Branson. I don't believe yes. you. Prove it. Yeah. I don't well, believe I'll, Richard I'll, Branson. I'll put him on. Hold on. Really? Oh my goodness, we're going to talk to Richard Branson. Do you believe oh. that? <laughs> Richard Branson? I, yes. What are you doing with Rex Tillerson in a submarine? We're looking for oil. Oil. You know, he talked to us about that on, on a few shows back. I, it sort of seems like a fool's errand. Now, everyone's trying to get into solar and energy efficient. Well, yes, of... but uh, we have a submarine now. I thought you would be ahead of the curve on that, but you're still looking for oil with all your wealth and submarines. Well, yes. Let, let me put Rex on to explain things. Okay, well, thank, thank you, Richard Branson. Rex, are you there? Oh, um, yes. Uh, uh, Rex Tillerson here. Okay, Rex. I'm on board a submarine. Yeah, have you, have you been drinking again, Rex? Well, there's a... I consume fresh seawater now. Oh, interesting. There, I heard there's funguses and algaes. Um, did uh, it's better than, um, yeah, it's better than the alcohol that my doctor used to prescribe. You you were prescribed it. Okay, okay. Yes, um, exactly. Very interesting. Um, I I had one question for you, Rex, uh, before we get going because we got a very very busy show here. Um. But uh, you said I, there was something about your old boss. Uh, uh, the president said something oh, about it. Yeah. He, he said, said something about a permanent, storm. It's called a permanent vacation. Well, yes, permanent vacation. That was an Aerosmith album, if I remember right. Uh, but the the president it said something about a storm that's coming. Are are you aware of this storm and what it's about? A storm. Huh? Yeah. Well. I the don't know, storm it's that's the, coming. The deep state. He keeps on mentioning. The day. Where are you part of the deep state or? Well, I'm underwater, so I guess that's pretty deep. That's pretty deep. Well, Rex, it has been a real kicker. Um, I hope you. Uh, we've we've had a great time getting to know you. I hope you don't mind that we're going to probably start taking calls from Richard Branson instead of you now because you are on a permanent vacation. But uh, tell Richard we look forward to hearing from him again, and uh, you you enjoy your vacation there, okay? Oh, yes, of course. Remember to look under the polar ice caps. Polar ice caps, got it. You may find something worth writing about. Okay, that's wonderful. And you, you take it easy with that seaweed there, okay? All right. All right. Goodbye, Rex. It's great talking to you. Take care. 
Wow, Rex Tillerson. There you go. There you go. Well, we're going to have our, our guest in just a second here. I want to cut to a quick commercial, and we'll be right back with Norman Sylvester, the legend, here in the Trench Digger Studios. Did you ever wonder what life would be like without advertising? Pretty scary, huh? Advertising keeps life interesting. Advertising helps viewers find bargains. Advertising makes life worth living. Advertise on the Peasant Revolution Band Variety Hour and see, and see your, your business, business improve. improve. We'd love to talk about how we can help make your business successful. So, you know, if we have Rex Tillerson coming in here anymore, I get... Oh, we're back. We're live. We're live. Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy. Uh, this is a, a, a very powerful moment for the show. We have, from the Oregon Music Hall of Fame, the legend, the one and only, Boogie Cat, Norman Sylvester. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Mr. Dodge, I'm doing wonderful. Thank wonderful. you. Wonderful. Uh, let me uh, put a mic in your hand and uh, I'll talk over here and let's make sure our uh, director of photography, David, is happy with his shots. Uh, is he happy? Are you happy, David? Uh, is, oh, I could. Oh, I'm thinking we could do. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah, do a little. On that shot. Okay. And then I'll stay on this shot. Okay. How is that working? You can. Yeah. You oh, can something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Getting weird. Okay. Look at that. It's so backwards. You're watching live theater. Live theater. It slipped down more. I should just... I know what I can do. I'll do this little thing here. and Okay, now I can see what we're doing. That I like. That's much better. Yes. Norman Sylvester. So, uh, did you ever watch uh, Welcome Back, Cotter? In the I did 70s? watch the show, actually. Yeah, uh, were you a fan of it, or you know, I just watched it. I, you know, I I was working trucking and doing that time. I didn't have a lot of TV time on my hands. Oh, and uh, yeah, I, the, gosh, goodness, keep slipping. There we are. <laughs> it just wants to do that. I'll but keep an eye on it. Brought back good memories. Good, yeah. Yes. Uh, so that uh, the early seventies, you were doing trucking. Yes. I, you know, I had some questions about that, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, what was uh, what was this all about here? With uh, I should go back. That's uh, yeah. There the uh, the uh, the first shot. There there was a, a wonderful shot there of uh, I believe your '70s career. This is well. I guess we're gonna we're gonna flash forward because that's what the photos are doing. This is more the '80s, isn't it? This actually started in 1992. 92. The Candlelight Cafe. Oh, the Candlelight Cafe. Yeah, that first photo with the candlelight, that was started. I did uh, the Boogie Cat Jam session there for 11 years on Thursday nights. Wow, wow. Uh, okay, and uh, how about this photo here? The one that you just showed was myself with Isaac Scott, uh -huh. my mentor at Key Largo, 1990. Uh, so that, that was Isaac Scott and you at Key Largo. Key Largo. Yeah, uh, the wonderful Isaac Scott. You've told me so much about him. So uh, w he was from Seattle, correct? Actually, he was originally from um, down south, but he was, he was here for high school. We went to high school together. Oh, okay. And then he moved to Seattle and became the king of Seattle Blues. Right, okay. Uh, yes, so did in what era was that? Uh, he left. Portland. I started a family in '65. He left in '66. Went up there to be a barber. Ended up playing with the Five Blind Boys and touring uh, with them for a while. 
So he just took over Seattle with uh, the blues. And would you go up there and sit in with him? I would. Then? Yeah, yeah. I would, yes. And likewise, he'd come to Portland. And Portland. Yeah. And yeah. we would call the show Blues Brothers Together Again. The, dominating the Northwest. Then. Killing it, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, well, uh, let's. This is another uh, trip down memory lane. I. Uh, 50. Oh, I don't think. I was seven years old. Seven years old in, in this photo. photo. Okay. And is that your sister there? It's my sister and my mom and dad in Louisiana, in Bastrop, Louisiana. In Louisiana? Yeah, that's where I, I was born in Bonita, but that was the rural part of the area, a country part. And Bastrop was the city where there was a big paper mill. Oh, really? My dad worked at the paper mill. So how big was Bastrop compared to Bonita? Well, you know, it's, uh, it was a, a municipality, so it was a good-sized town. Uh, do you uh, ever get back to Louisiana much? I've been or? back in years, man. Yeah, all yeah. my uh, major grandparents and uncles all passed away. I just got first cousins down there. Trying to work to where I can play down in Arkansas somewhere where I can visit everybody. Oh, sure, that yeah. Works. I'm working on a gig down there, like King Biscuit or something like that. You oh, know? right, right. Yeah, just to get on the road. Well, I, now, have you played the South much in your various lines of? I have not. I have not. That's what. Once I moved out to the Northwest, uh -huh. see, when I came out here, um, I was just a little singer, you know, I sang in the choir in Louisiana. I didn't start playing guitar until I was a sophomore in high school. Wow. Wow. Uh, okay, uh, we're going to continue on down. Uh, this is your life, Norman yeah. Sylvester. This yeah. is your wife, Paula. Yeah, we Wonderful. In 1994. 94. Is that from the wedding or? That's Around that like era, Melody Ballroom. Uh, we uh, put a I put a little mini blues festival together. We had dancers and uh, a band and solo acts and everything. You know, it was a really nice uh, affair. I'm I'm very familiar with the uh, Melody Ballroom stairs and lifting stuff oh, up yeah. there. That's, you know that's uh, real. That's a tough load in. Uh, <laughs> that's that photo there, 1976. Now this this is the one I originally starting my uh, welcome back Cotter question. Uh, is this is about the time era when the like show would have been on? My gangster days right there. You what in, is this also part of that? That's 69 right there. Oh, that's 69. That's okay. Band, uh, my first uh, soul band, Rated X. Whoa, okay, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, yeah. Rated X, where, how, uh, 69 is when it started? Yeah, about 69, man. That little lady that's in the, the, the little cute lady there, her name is Penny Fontenot. She was a baby in the band. She was like 16 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were trying to get a name for the band. Yeah. And she looked around at all the fellas and said, hmm, all you fellas is Rated X. <laughs> so that's how we got the name. <laughs> so, <laughs> how long did Rated X go for? It lasted until um, 1972. Actually, we okay. recorded live in Va at Vanco Records. Over, we did a 45. Uh huh. Uh, this and what happened was the trucking company intervened. I had a family. I had to go to graveyard shift, and I ended that band. To oh, go to graveyard wow. shift for graveyard shift for five years. Wow. And and was that the end of y your music for that period for or minute, for a minute, yeah. But okay. I kept playing music on the side while I worked in the trucking company. But that forty five disc that was recorded in sixty nine, uh in two thousand I got an email from a guy in England and said, uh, I'm looking for a Norman Sylvester that recorded a forty five yeah. At Vanco Records back in 1969, we're doing a study on Northwest blues and R&B. Wow. And he said, do you have any of those uh, discs? And as a matter of fact, I got three cases still left. Uh, and so he purchased a whole case of them. Oh, I would love to. So you <laughs> still have two cases left then, I or? still have about a case and a half. Oh, I, we need to. I'd love to you hear have that one. music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, all original. A uh, fellow by the name of Clance Rogers, and uh, he was a keyboard player. Uh -huh. He wrote one side. I did the other side. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's so neat. And and was it uh, blues and R&B, or did you mostly get into the psychedelic no, at that phase? mostly R&B, straight okay. R&B. Okay. Yeah. Well, and then I had a, a, a question about that one uh, younger picture of you. Is that Shanico? What? The western town that you're in? I, I don't know. Which one was it, man? Well, I think it's a, it's, it's a few down. I have to... Uh... With my parents, you mean? Uh, no, it was uh, uh, the, the uh, is a young man on the porch there. Oh, no, that, what that was is the porch that I was on was an old country store 
at a crossroads. You heard of the Robert Johnson Crossroads? Yes. In, in Louisiana, every once in a while, okay. you come up to a crossroad. There's a store over here, right. a store over there. They just got, you know, snacks and all that, you know. But that's actually in Louisiana? And that, and that was in Bonita, Louisiana, and my cousin, uh, uh -huh. Sam Bailey. Uh -huh. That was Sam Bailey's store. Okay. Now, the names down there are real funny because Sam had a son. His nickname was Nook. Mm -hmm. So, Nook Bailey. And Sam's wife was Snooty. Snooty <laughs> Bailey. They call her Snooty because she walked around with him. <laughs> so, so, they gave it a nickname, Snooty Bailey. Yes, indeed. Wow. That's, yeah. Uh, and did you know many of the Louisiana people in Portland when you got here? Or was there kind of a... Uh, we uh, came out here, my dad came out here looking for work. Uh, when I said earlier he worked at the paper mill in Bastrop, mm -hmm. they started laying off. But he had been out here in, to Vanport okay. back in the day. And okay. my uncle came out to Vanport as well. Okay. But my uncle stayed. Dad came back to Louisiana. So my uncle got a job at St. Vincent's Hospital. So when the paper mill went down in Bastrop, he told my dad to come out here to get him on at St. Vincent's. And my dad came out here and started working at St. Vincent's Hospital. Okay, yeah. okay, wow. Uh, and is that the old one up in the southwest it was the or one northwest on, hills? It was the or? one up on uh, 27th and off of Lovejoy. Okay. And then they moved it out to Barnes Road. Okay, yeah, okay. Back in later years. I was born in one of them, I can't remember, but it doesn't exist. The the St. Vincent's in 1970 where I was born. Yeah, it was up there in northwest Portland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And Isaac Scott, uh, yeah. I'll tell you something. You know, most guitar players fall in love with guitars. Uh huh. Isaac never fell in love with a guitar. Every time I saw him, he was playing a different guitar. Really? <laughs> That's just when I thought he had the most killing sound that you could ever have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said, "Man, I could ki I kill to get that sound." I'd go there. He'd have another setup. And would it a totally different sound or same sound? Though. Same sound, but different rig, different. Yeah. It just was him, man. It oh, just yeah. was his natural ability to play. He'd go to the music store on a Friday evening and say to the music guy, who a good friend of his in Seattle, say, uh, give me that guitar right there and can I have that amp for the weekend? Mm -hmm. And he'd walk out with that. You know, so he was one of those natural musicians that could play a two by four with strings on it, man, to make it sound Yeah, good. right, right, right. <laughs> That's, uh, takes a talent. No, my I'm pretty right the there, opposite of that. Father right there, he was a gospel singer. He sang in a quartet, so that's how I was exposed to gospel music. He sang on a, a traveling quartet out of uh, the uh, Southern Baptist Church. He traveled and, around the South singing. And that was a, a, this deep baritone? Is that... He sang tenor, actually. Oh, really? He had, they had a baritone and a tenor, you know, and, of course, a bass. Boom, boom, uh -huh. boom, 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 boom. Would, would you all sing together when... We really? always sing around the house. Uh -huh. Yes, indeed. So that's where my grandmother volunteered me to sing in the choir. That's uh -huh. how I got into the choir. Okay. So she didn't tell. She didn't ask me. She told me I was singing in the choir. Yeah. It's it's hard for me to imagine you with a, a voice other than the steep lower register. But I guess you went through puberty like everyone else and yeah. must have had a higher when range. I came, when I came to Portland, I stuttered and I had a southern drawl. Uh huh. And kids would ask me to talk just to laugh at me, you know. So really? it kind of made me. Really? Self-conscious a little bit. So once I got to playing the guitar and had mm -hmm. that guitar between me mm -hmm. and, and the people, it gave me confidence. I used to practice in front of a mirror just to see how I'd look mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that made me have confidence to go out and play, you know, and look at the people. So, you know, it was a journey. Yes, a yes. Journey. No, I, I know exactly. In the 80s, I, I had uh, I had one of the ho most horrible freshman years. I w wanted to join the um, Wolverines from Red Dawn and wore camouflage. <laughs> it was very wow. uncomfortable at yeah. Central Catholic High School. And, uh, and then I got contact lenses, and I put a guitar in my hand, mm. and everything changed. My mom was a beautician, see, so she actually... Give me different high hairstyles in high school every mm -hmm. month or so. She, she braided, you know, cornrow braids back in the day. She press and curl it sometimes, you know. She blow out the afro, so she was constantly changing my hair. So well, I, I don't. Were cornrows going on during the early sixties? Oh, yeah, I mean, cornrows have been going on for years. Yeah, yeah. Where okay. Where came from? Well, I, yeah. Dodger. I, <laughs> 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 Why do they call them cornrows from the cornfield? 
Okay, okay. The so row, the row in the, the cornfield, cotton rows, they go in a they well, come in a line. It's interesting because the uh well, I guess it's just one of those style things, but when you get into the late forties to early sixties it seems like all styles were kind of getting homogenized around something. I have on my uh we go to my family's home for gatherings on holidays and stuff. And I could take you with me over there and we could be sitting around and eating some turkey and some dressing and some sweet potato pie. And one of my nieces would come up to you and they could have your hair braided in about an hour. <laughs> oh, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> I, I'm in. All Let's do down, it. All the way down to the end, man. You'd be running around looking like Bo Derek. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think we should go to an advertisement. So we will be right back with Norman Sylvester from the Peasant Revolution Band Variety. Well, yeah. I thought maybe I was going to get this show off, you know, take a little bit of break. But the fans were asking. The fans were asking about it. Fans want to see me. Fans want to hear me talk more about Safford Brothers, Downtown Blend, Taste the City Coffee. And you know what? I'm not going to disappoint the fans. I tell you what, show business... It's strange. Nobody should ask for this life. You think you want the riches, and you think you want the fame. And then, if you ever get any of that stuff, you don't know what to do with it. You have no idea. But I tell you what, what always calms me down, what, what always centers me is a good cup of Safford Brothers Town Town Blend Taste the City Coffee. It's good. Damn good. Yum. Okay, everybody ready? And we're in. Ready and go.
Yeah! Red's garage! We fix! Broken hose! Smashed windshield! We fix! No problem! Be back Tuesday! Fix then! No! No job too small! We fix! Your car? Our car, we take care! No problem! No problem! We fix! Broken headlight! Broken trunk! Carburetor! We fix! No problem! No problem! Ready Tuesday! Ready Tuesday! You come back! No problem! Red's Garage! 349 Volga Avenue! Yeah! All right. Okay. And uh, we're back. We're back. Wow. That was exciting. Uh, the Ray Charles, What I Say. What I Say. Um, uh, how long have you been playing that song for? We, we did, uh, Patrick Lamb did a tribute, Northwest tribute to Ray Charles. I remember that, And yeah. I sang on that. That was, what, 2012? And uh, Patrick's uh, one of your uh, young uh, players, correct? Yeah, Patrick started with me when he was... 19? Wow. Yeah, at the River City Saloon up on uh, 12th and Jefferson back uh, in the day. And he played at with the Candlelight Cafe with me. He's on that Live at the Candlelight CD that we recorded in 1994. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, the, uh, I, Stu uh, Dodge, my father, mm -hmm. sent me some footage uh, recently of him playing with, I think it was called Little Gregory or something like that, no. but Patrick's with him, mm -hmm. and he's like 17. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I just realized that he might be younger than me, but yeah, it was, uh, in, it was I think it was one of the um, trumpet players from uh, uh, the uh, the big uh, Thomas Lauderdale's uh, Pink Martini. Okay, yeah, you know, Patrick has uh, toured with Gino Vanelli. Yes, uh, yes. Bobby Caldwell. Right. He just recently is recording... Uh, a new uh, instrumental CD at uh, Jeff Lorber Studio. Okay. In the, in the L.A. So he's doing great stuff, man. Yeah, he's yeah. Powerful young man doing wonderful things. But you know, a lot of them started with me. LaRonda still yes. started with me. Gretchen Mitchell, you know, the, you name it. Uh, I remember Lisa Mann when she first came to Portland. Uh huh. Back in the day, she was a, a physical bodybuilder kind of little lady. At the oh, time. really? Yeah, she did physique. The bass player, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Did, uh, uh, personal, you know. Training, fitness, fitness. Okay. Posing. Right. Yeah, she still, you know, was a, Were uh, aerobics uh, in the 80s. Yeah, aerobics. <laughs> That's what it was, aerobics. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, I wanted to take a little look. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure if we're going to just jump in the middle of something here, but uh, you and I have been working together over the past year, and we're going to finally see some uh, daylight on this, I have a feeling, this month. Um, but we'll take a little look at uh, what's queued up here, and I'll uh, edit something sensible. In. Now won't you listen, honey, while I say, how could you tell me? That you're going away Don't say that we must part Don't break my aching heart You know I loved you truly For many years I loved you night and day How can you leave me? Can't you see my tears? Listen while I say After you've gone I think there's always been people yeah. moving into Portland. Yeah. Always, always, always. Yeah. Because, because what we've seen, uh -huh. um, Sheer and I, we've seen um, families that come here, mm -hmm. talk to families in the South, in mm -hmm. Arkansas, and all the places, uh, and say it's nice out here. You can get a job, and you can do this. And a lot of the big jobs were laying off and people would move, migrate this way to be with their families that Absolutely. been out here Absolutely. a long time saying the, the grass is greener, mm -hmm. come on out mm -hmm. here, you know. So, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. they came 
that mm -hmm. came out to the Northwest, which is right. a, a good right. commitment because you can come right. 2,700 miles, 3,000 miles right. from home. We moved uh, from Giles Lake to um, North Gattenbine. Okay. Yes, North Gattenbine uh, in about the year of 51. Oh, I was born in Arkansas. Arkansas. Joined the United States Air Force. Went to San Antonio, Texas. Then they sent me to the Fairchild Air Force Base in Spokane. I was born in Los Angeles, but uh, I was only there a few months. I came here from uh, Texas, uh, San Antonio, Texas. Anything to get out of Arkansas would be better, you know, because it, it was rough down there. It was rough. No jobs for anyone, so I joined the United States Air Force just to get away. They had to end the buy property because my father, on my father's side, my God, I think almost everybody on this side came up here from Mississippi, different parts, you know. Yeah, and they loved it. It's like, hey, once they come, came up here, you know, they didn't want to go back. We live in the country. Uh -huh. Well, we did too. Yeah, and the rule, and a lot of rural people kind of healed themselves until they really yeah, got uh, serious. My grandmother was a midwife. My grandmother was a midwife. <laughs> uh, one of the things about the South, too, now, um, education wise, mm -hmm. my sister came up at 12 years old from Mississippi. We went down actually and picked her up, my parents. And um, she was a grade ahead of me. When I came here, yeah. in we're back. We're back. Uh, yes, that was uh, Tales of Old Portland. Yes. Norman Sylvester, executive producer. We are doing a series. Um, uh, uh, we're hoping to broaden out and get a lot of the neighborhoods, but right now we're focusing on the Northeast, North Portland experience, uh, uh, primarily the African-American experience in that time from from moving to Portland in the Vanport era to the early 90s and everything in between there. And what's special about it is the personal memories. You know, just let them talk about mm -hmm. their memories. And it's just really a wonderful thing to see their faces light up as they recall, as they're being interviewed. It's a wonderful feeling to, to watch and be a part of that. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. just uh, in awe of, of being witness to it all. Yes. So it's, it's, uh, we had a beautiful uh, day yesterday. I, what, yeah. what a day of interviews. Yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of trying to get my head together. It was so overwhelming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, really powerful. Yes. Um, and the series is, I'm very, well, I don't care what you think of the series. I think that we've done, uh, I'm very happy with what we've well, come Well, bravo up with, to you so, for yeah. your letting it be your brainchild, and I appreciate you oh, bringing me in on it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, to be a part of it. Well, I think that kind of touches back onto uh, when I first remember meeting you, which uh, I remember it, uh, I was 25, 1995, working as a sound guy, and it was probably my first... Um, running a stage for the first time at the Good in the Hood in the Holy Redeemer, Holy Redeemer backyard. Campus, yeah. And uh, uh, you came and gave me an envelope of, of money for the bands. Right. <laughs> you were your stew son. I can trust you, yeah, right? I trust you. <laughs> and that was kind of the beginning of our friendship That's as right. well as my first gig for death. Envelope so. full of money. I trust you. <laughs> It was yeah it was but but I I think it sort of touches back on this because I was I was mixing the multicultural stage and yes. uh, it, which was something that you always seem to um, the good in the hood still does that and and even without you being as involved and active as you used to be I think that's a a wonderful aspect that you put to to that festival that, that, that helped make it very big and round with a lot of a tapestry of uh, we wanted to, to embrace the whole community, each person in the community. So I tapped into the Regional Arts and Culture Council to multicultural acts that had received community outreach grants. Mm -hmm. And if they hadn't used their grants, I would beg them to play my festival. All right. And yeah. uh, I would sign their pink slip when they would play the festival. And it helped me bring in didgeridoo players and yeah. uh, Brazilian dancers and uh, just everything. Uh, Mexican kids. folklorica. Yo, Do you remember them? And uh, yeah, Mon ballet Mon folklore. Mon Mon well, I remember that the older guy that he kind of looked like Robert Duvall. Do you remember that guy? And he would always come with the Mexican folklorica, uh, and they'd have all the his outfits. Name was, um, and uh, Bill Miley. 
Oh, really? M-I-L-E-Y. And cassette tapes. That was back when the kids used cassette tapes for yes, their... Yes, indeed. Their and uh, ballet folklorica was very traditionally dressed. Mm -hmm. They always looked so beautiful. And yeah. our kids in the inner city never get to see that. Right. And it was just wonderful to bring that to them, you know. Right. That was the mission of Good in the Hood, to just... It was good in the hood. And it yeah. still continues on it, today. It does today. Yes. Uh, uh, which will probably be one of our concluding episodes of the uh, of Tales of Old Portland. We'll, we'll probably wrap yeah. up on the good in the hood and, and how that left the community. And then everyone started moving here after that. So, yeah, so I'm working on an uh, inner city festival, you know, healing the healthcare blues thing now. Yes. Right? Now tell us about the, the inner city blues festival. When did that start and what is was your role in it? It's the seventh annual. It's, Seven. it's coming from, we took a little hiatus from the inner city for about five or six years. And uh, uh, Bob Gross and Ken Cropper went to a... The another, Blazer Bob Gross? No. Oh. <laughs> another Bob Gross. Another Bob Gross. Right. Uh, a labor Bob Gross. Went to a Healthcare for All Oregon meeting. Uh -huh. And they got tied up in universal health care. Got okay. passionate. So they, they said, let's get the band back together and bring this festival back. But we'll bring it back as a benefit for health care for all Oregon. Okay. So it's, the mission is to get the universal health care on the 2020 ballot. Wow. Everybody in and nobody out. So especially this year, in its seventh year, yeah. that is a focus for universal health care. It's important. And it, now, didn't we, we were originally, though, you were, this was more trying to get blues musicians health care originally, well, before right? Before it was or? just for a variety of different benefits uh -huh. in the city was. It started out jam for Jesse when Jesse Jackson ran for president. Oh, right. Okay. And it started off as that. And once that you know, didn't happen. We kept it going as the Inner City Blues Festival. Okay. And that's it lasted for years that way. And now it's the seventh annual Hill in the Healthcare Blues Festival. It's on April twenty first at the North Portland Eagles Lodge. Twenty first or twenty second? Twenty first. April twenty first. Yeah. At the Eagles Log. Yeah, ticket to Lodge. Mail. Got your tickets. Get your tickets now. We're going to put links up when this site, when this uh, broadcast gets syndicated. And yeah. we will also have the uh, new Facebook page for Tales of Old Portland. I'll yes, include that old, in the links, old. too. So, um, all sorts of exciting stuff. Um, we, uh, unfortunately, with our uh, new Russian financing system, we have more ads to uh, run. So, uh, let's, let's see what they're up to. Yeah, well... Okay. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, we've got this new slogan. I, I don't know what genius came up with this, you know. Uh, pardon my cynicism, but uh, we are talking Safford Brothers, Downtown Blend, Taste the City Coffee, and it is good. I, I will agree. I will always agree. It's good. And that that that's the new slogan, and I think it's perfect. I mean, it says it all. It's simple. It was a genius who just said two words. Sums up the product, it's good. And Saffron Brothers Downtown Blend Taste the City Coffee is something you should be enjoying. I know Jeff Dodge is enjoying it all the time. I don't know why he's not doing these commercials, but you know, hey, I love a good payday. And I love Saffron Brothers Downtown Blend Taste the City Coffee. And I love the new slogan. It's good. It's damn good. Yum. We're back uh, with Norman Sylvester, our, our star guest. Very happy to have him here. Rich right. Reese is here. Uh, if you want to uh, maybe pull that microphone oh, right. real closer. Yeah, I, I, out of the way so I was... have all the latitude for what I say. I want to be able to... Yes, yeah, yes. Hand. Well, and, and now I, I you know, uh, <laughs> Russia has been telling me to kind of limit how often I share... The, the spotlight with my fellow band members. No, that's okay. You know, I actually, Norman, I got a message, and this is serious, this is not part of our shtick, uh -huh. from my uncle, who's a sax player, and he saw that you were on the show tonight and mm -hmm. asked me to say that he enjoyed sitting in with you in the 90s. His name was Randy Reese. Oh, yeah, and, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all uh, right. My yeah. regards to him. Yes, I'll indeed. That along. Yeah. So, Back in the day. Answer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's back in St. Louis now. Is he still playing? Yeah, he plays almost every night. He's in a couple of Zydeco bands. He's so. a bad man. Yeah, he's been clean for 20 years, too. Oh, so, God bless yeah, him for that. Yes, he's he Playing real well. Yeah. But uh, wanted me to pass that along. 
Yeah, Portland um, was uh, and still is a just a melting pot of great musicians. In the blues, in particular, yeah. seems. Yes. To be, uh, this is a blues town, the way I call it. Uh, I'm really uh, curious about this X-rated band. Actually, yes. rated like, X. Rated X. Yeah. That was a um, ten-piece soul band. Okay. And we um, we played uh, all the um, around all the Northeast Portland clubs. Uh, we played, you know, stuff on Mount Hood, you know, like ski parties and stuff like that. And we, what was a ski party like? In, <laughs> so in '69, it was wild. It was kind of like beer drinking in the snow, and they but in, in the, the Timberline Lodge, Lodge? Up, up in the um, the lodge area. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. We rocked it out up there, man. Wow. You know, and I don't do well with snow, because <laughs> no, I don't ski. <laughs> but it was a fun time. You know, we uh, we got our set list from the back of Jet Magazine, whatever. The top ten songs for the month. When Shaft came out, we yeah. was on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> when Curtis Mayfield came out with um, Superfly, uh -huh. we was right on it. You know, all those. And I had the Wawa, right? Yes. I played Shaft so much in one night, I'd get $20 bills to play it again. Oh. Play it again. The next day, my leg would be just so <laughs> from that Wawa, man. Yeah, yeah. Soft. Well, you brought your Wawa tonight, oh, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I was so I excited. Leave without it. Yes, yes, <laughs> it is wonderful to hear you on that. Uh, Scotty Scotterino, I, I heard you might have a question out there. Uh, the uh, Russia's trying to expand. Why don't you come on in here and and and? Oh, and I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I have no questions tonight, Mister Doc. Uh, Scotty oh. Scotterino and I have a love affair with uh, G and L. Guitars. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, see, yeah. we share that love affair, oh, yeah. see. That's what we talk about all the time. The GNL. You, if you see us whispering, we whisper about that GNL. <laughs> F100. The F1, and is that what we're rocking tonight? That's yeah, what that's we brought with us. I brought it for Scotty. It, yeah. it's, not, it's not a tone knob. It's a I can't hear you. Come it's in a, here. It's a parametric EQ. Parametric the back EQ. The back one, yeah. Instead of a tone. Yeah, yeah. I almost understand that. I, I just play them. I don't understand yeah, that. Geometric. Uh, well, uh, on that note, I think we're going to take another ad break here. A lot of ads to pay here, so we're going to do that. And here we go. Comey's is your market of choice for all Russians' things. Here you find Moscow candle cages, golden clocks from our famous gold regions, we sell funny keychains and gemstones from the Siberian hinterlands, along with black seashells. We have finest capers from Kiev, delicious Russian fish, and matryoshka dolls to make you smile. Komis has toys for children and handmade ships from St. Petersburg. We bring you back to the old country with memories of motherland. At Comis Russian Import Market, all are welcome. We put the nick in Nikonak. And, uh, and then... Okay, we're... We're back. Uh, <clears throat> we're back, and I just uh, I just wanted to uh, get uh, Norman is is been a wonderful having you here, a wonderful guest, a uh, wonderful friend, and uh, uh, we're very excited of this new series we're going to be bringing. Um, I uh, but as I you typically like to do, I'd, I'd like to um, give my best regards to the city. Um, the, the Mayor Ted Wheeler is actually doing a pretty good job, I have to say so far. Um, but this Mayor Frank Ivancy comes to mind. Now, Mayor Frank Ivancy, let me tell you, that guy was a rascal. Oh, Ed, why, it's, it's my lovely wife, Jamila. She was with us at the beginning of this show. How are you, honey? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Has anything changed since the beginning? No, no, it's just, okay. Uh, it's okay. just coming closer to the end. Oh, are you saying it's time? Say goodnight. Goodnight, Jeff.